Hello, Ian Jameson here, and uh, I'm glad that we can take a few moments together to have some time in the Word of God. And uh, I can hardly believe that it's approaching the seventh week now since we entered the uh, lockdown situation, um, but I hope that you're keeping safe and well. What I'd like to speak to you about uh, this morning is about worship and about waiting. And, you know, I I think that that could characterise many of our experiences as believers during this period of time that, um, yes, we want to worship the Lord and uh, we are hopefully being able to gather with other believers in some way, whether through Zoom or in other ways, um, and we're able to worship the Lord. Worship isn't dependent on being in a, a certain place at a certain time, of course, but we're also waiting. We're waiting at the moment. And in order to, to look at this subject together, I'd like you to turn to the book of Psalms, please. That wonderful book dedicated to the worship of God, Psalm and 33. Psalm 33, please. And I just want to look at the first three verses and the last three verses with you of Psalm 33. It's not one of the more well-known psalms, but it's a, a psalm that's very likely to be written by David. There's no ascription uh, of the psalm particularly, so uh, we can't be 100% certain, but it's surrounded by um, psalms of David and it's related to the psalms around it. So um, there's every reason to think that David was the author. I'd like to read the first three verses then of Psalm 33. And you'll notice if, if you've got your Bibles open in front of you that the first verse is an echo of the last verse of the previous psalm. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Thinking here about our calling, our calling to the worship of God. And it's part of our eternal calling. It's something that we, as believers in the Lord Jesus, are called to now, and that calling will never end. We will be worshipping the Lord thousands of years from now when we are with him in the new heavens and the new earth. What a wonderful thing that is for us to be able to look forward to an eternity of the worship of the only one who deserves our worship. You know, there are many things that the church has been asked to do uh, in this period of time between uh, its birth at Pentecost and our calling home at the rapture. And there's a number of things we've been asked to do. We've been asked to um, to pray. We've been asked to preach the gospel. We've been asked to uh, teach the Bible. We've been asked to uh, sing together. There's a whole range of things that we've been asked to do to remember him uh, in the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup on a on a Sunday morning to baptise those who place their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And yet so many of those things will come to an end when we are finally with him, when he comes to take us home. We'll no longer be celebrating the Lord's Supper in the way that we do now. We'll no longer be uh, uh, commemorating and, and enacting baptism um, as we do now. We'll no longer be praying to an unseen God as we do now, but worship. The worship of the living God is something that will never end. It's something that's part of our eternal calling. There are two reasons given uh, for the worship of God in verse 1. Just look at verse 1 with me. First of all, shout for joy. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. The first thing is a response. It's a response of hearts filled with joy because of who God is and what he has done for us. We have so many reasons to worship the Lord to respond from hearts that are full uh, to uh, the God who has made our hearts so full. Shout for joy. So it's a response. But then we read that praise befits the upright. Praise befits the upright. So not only is it a response, but it's also a responsibility. It's also something that we ought to do, something that we must do. Why? Because God deserves it, because God is due our worship and it's only right that he should be worshipped. And those two elements of worship, both a response and a responsibility, are wedded together. They can't be separated. If you were to have worship that was solely um, a responsibility and solely duty and didn't come from a, a heart full of joy, then uh, you would have dry and lifeless worship just born out of duty. But then if you were to have worship that was solely a response, solely when we felt uh, filled with joy solely when we felt bubbling over in this sense of response then perhaps it would dry up when the difficult times come and when the valley experiences come 
were to shout for joy, yes, but also because praise befits the upright. It's something that we ought to do as those who know and love the Lord. In verse 3, we are instructed to sing to him a new song, a new song. Well, this isn't uh, necessarily uh, an argument from the Bible for modern worship music, but uh, what does it mean to sing to the Lord a new song? I'd like to turn you to the book of Revelation at this point, to the book of Revelation, that wonderful book about the future uh, that the Bible lays out. And I'd like to look with you at Revelation chapter 4 and 5, just um, a small extract from each, and two songs that are sung uh, and will be sung in the future. Uh, in this wonderful vision given to John of things that will come, uh, he listens in to two separate songs here, one in chapter 4, one in chapter 5. And one is an ancient song and one is a new song. Just look with me to verse uh, 10 and 11 of chapter 4. The twenty-four elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, and then listen to the content of this song. How are they worshipping God, or what are they praising him for? Worthy or are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. Why? For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Friends, this is a wonderful song of worship to the God of creation. To the creator God of infinite power and majesty, one who is worthy of worship. I mentioned in a, a video, um, a few videos back, that uh, Rebecca and I had gone out into the garden at night to watch that meteor shower. And that's a, a song that would have been very fitting uh, for that occasion. You created all things and by your will they existed and were created. And that's a song that so many could have sung. That's a, a song that... Adam and Eve could have sung. That's a, a song that Job and Abraham and Moses could have sung. And yet, if we turn over to chapter 5, we find in verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, and listen to the content of the new song, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. Why? For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Stunning, stunning words. This is a new song. This is something that Abraham and Job and Moses couldn't have sung because they didn't know about this lamb who would be slain. They didn't know about blood ransoming people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And we are on the other side of the cross now, brothers and sisters, and we can look forward one day to participating in worship of the God who has ransomed and redeemed us, the Lamb who was slain. What a thing to be able to sing a new song to the Lord. So we're called to the worship of God. But let's just think as we bring our thoughts to a close today about the future. We've thought in Revelation there about the future that awaits us. But at the end of this psalm, we read about waiting. Yes, worshipping, but also waiting. Uh, let's look at verse 20. Let's look at verse 20. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Even as we hope in you. What are we hoping for just now, brothers and sisters? Well, in one sense, we're hoping for an end to the lockdown. We're going to hear an update on Sunday. Uh, I'm sure many of us are hoping that restrictions will be eased. We're hoping that a vaccine will be found. We're hoping that we'll be able to see our friends and loved ones in the flesh again as soon as possible. But as Bible-believing Christians, what are we most of all hoping for? We are hoping for the return of our wonderful Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to take us to be with himself. He's promised to do so. And God is a promise-making and a promise-keeping God. He has never broken a single promise that he has made. And he said that he would come back to take us to the Father's house. And he'll do so. He'll do so. And it could be today. It could be tomorrow. This could be the last video I make. Today could be the last day that we have upon the earth. The Lord could return for us at any moment. We look forward to his coming. For those who are not ready, 
for those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour and have not obeyed the Gospel. This coming of the Lord is a deadline. It's a deadline. But for us, it's a wonderful, wonderful hope. Why? Verse 21. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. We have come to trust the Lord Jesus. We have come to place our trust in him and to love him and to love him. You know, nobody watching this video has ever seen the Lord Jesus Christ. We've never had that privilege. We haven't lived during those 33 years that he was here upon the earth. We've never seen him with our eyes and yet there's coming a day when we will see him and our eyes will meet his eyes for the first time. Let me just conclude by uh, reading you some verses in 1st Peter and chapter 1 verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Isn't that true? Isn't that wonderful? That if you are a Christian today, you love the Lord Jesus, but you've never seen him. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Brothers and sisters, we're called to the worship of God. He's so worthy of worship. We have so many reasons to worship God today. And we're also waiting. We're waiting for that fulfilment of our joy, that fulfilment of the longing of our hearts to see our wonderful Saviour. We pray that he will be coming very soon. Amen.